Hey guys, Kendra here. Dylan, of course, is over to the side there. Uh, but it's been a while. I decided to take a little break uh, because the Reading Room Award is coming pretty quickly and we have some other things going on behind the scenes. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take a moment since I can't really review books right now anyway. So I will be doing the first part of my October wrap up very soon and that will be books that didn't qualify for the award but that I did read in October. But today I decided to do my semi-annual library sale haul. Now many of you know if you've been watching my channel that every six months my library has a library sale and this year I'm a friend of the library which basically means you donate to the library and you become a friend of the library. Anyway, you just get in early. So I got in early and so I bought some books. So I'm pretty excited to share them with you. Now you might be wondering, like Kendra, you, you do haul a lot of books. Uh, where do they all go? I do actually get rid of about a Trader Joe's bag worth of books every month at least and all of the ARCs I receive. I either give to someone else who wants to promote that book also or I donate them to little free libraries. So yeah, that's where they go end up but this is more like you just you don't get to see the rest of the Kendra bookish ecosystem uh, this is more like how they enter the ecosystem <laughs> anyway um, I have several used books here and I'm very excited and happy to sort my library and buy used books for them um, I'm bought a few books for other people uh, and I bought some books for Christmas presents so I won't show you those but these are the ones that I bought for me um, or Samuel, actually, because there are a couple in here for Samuel. So let's start with those. Uh, first up is a memoir. It's a, a Long Way Gone. And this is the memoir of a boy soldier uh, by Ishmael Bea. And this is um, the story of his life in Sierra Leone when he was a boy soldier. And then eventually he came over to the United States. Uh, and this is his story and this sounds like a Samuel book so I picked it up and he's like oh that was on my TBR I was like I know I picked it up for you <laughs> uh, so yeah there's that one I'm excited to see what Samuel thinks of this one the other one is one I found for a dollar and Samuel read it and had loved it and I also enjoyed it and that's the art of racing in the rain this is going to be made into a movie uh, and so I was excited to find this one. If you like Marley and Me and like dog kind of stories, this is definitely a book for you. It's from the perspective of a dog and his life with his human. And it's really the story of the humans, honestly. And the dog is viewing that from the outside. And it's a very sad book, but I thought it ended really well. And you all know how I feel about sad dog stories. <laughs> Another book I found is My Life in Middlemarch by Rebecca Mead, and this is a memoir about her reflections of Middlemarch, and there's a lot of parallels there. I have not read Middlemarch yet. I thought it's on my TBR for a long time, but I wanted to actually read Middlemarch first, and I've had Middlemarch in the works to read for like two years now, and it's not happened. I really need to fix that. <laughs> so one of my favorite books is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. They're actually two books but this is a nice bound edition. It's very beautiful. Uh, this is by Lewis Carroll and the Cheshire Cat is my favorite Disney character of all time and I absolutely love the quirkiness of this story and I don't know what it is about it and I don't know it's just like a its own mythology. It's really interesting especially since Charles Dodson Lewis Carroll was like a mathematician it's just so interesting. I love Alice in Wonderland retellings. So yeah, but this is beautiful. This is going to sit on my children's bookshelf face out because it's just beautiful um, front and back. So a couple years ago, I picked up um, Boxers and Saints. So this is Boxers. This is the first part and it's a graphic novel by uh, Jean Nguyen Yang. And this is uh, about the Boxer Rebellion. Now this is a like a dual narrative. So you'll see this on the back. I don't have the Saints one. I'll have to pick it up. It wasn't there. I would have picked up as well. Um, but you have this is the Boxers one and then simultaneously it's the Saints one. And they're both from the perspective of uh, Chinese young people during the time. And the girl is part of the um, missionary like commune going on there. So she sees Saints and in the Boxer Rebellion, this edition, the boy sees ancient Chinese mythological figures. So I, it's so well done. I absolutely, it's one of my favorite graphic novels that I've read in the last few years. Uh, and I'm so excited that I finally found a copy and I just need to find the other one and have them together. And they sit together um, 
on the shelf and it's the other half of the face. It's, it's so well done. Ugh, they're just so gorgeous. So if you haven't picked up a copy of this or read it, definitely add that to your TBR. It's just so good. <laughs> so some of the other children's books I picked up is Touching Spirit Bear by Ben Michelson. This is like the hatchet. It's basically a young man is in the forest and has to survive the elements of the outdoors. It's that kind of thing. This one is The Tiger Rising. This is a National Book Award finalist by Kate D. Camillo. And I actually don't know what this is about, but I saw it and thought I should pick it up. But she has, Kate D. Camillo has won lots of things. I think she won the Newberry for a book about a squirrel? Flying squirrel? I don't know. It was a very weird book. <laughs> Uh, and then also I found a copy of Inside Out and Back Again by Tan Hao Lai. I, if I see this, and these copies are like a dollar a piece. So if I see a really nice copy like this from Scholastic, it, this is a great book to give to kids. I'm going to wait till my nephew's a little older, but he'll probably re be receiving a copy of this later. But this is a poetry novel about a little girl's experience fleeing Vietnam at the end of the Vietnam War and immigrating to the United States as a refugee and what that experience was like. Uh, and I found it a very beautiful, beautiful book. So in a, in a total different direction, <laughs> I was in the true crime section looking, I found, I didn't even realize I had one, and this lady was there and she was a huge true crime fan. All of a sudden she picks up this book and throws it into my tote bag. Like this, you have to read this. And this is The Last Victim, A True Life Journey into the Mind of a Serial Killer by Jason Moss with Jeffrey Kotler. And she described it like this, and it's, there's no like blurbs on the back really, it's just, it, there's nothing, it's weird. Anyway, she described it as this kid went in to interview a serial killer and came out and then like killed himself a few days later, something, a few hours later, I don't know. That's what she said. She said it's really expensive on eBay and I had to find it. Thank you, Dylan. And it was only 50 cents, so like, sure. So there were some books that I found from this year that I picked up. So I found a first edition copy of Educated by Tara Westover. It's gone off onto my shelf. I totally forgot to put it on here. But I found a first edition and the one I had bought from Amazon was not first edition. So I switched them out. <laughs> um, so I was, I was so excited to find that. I just, I just love that kind of thing. And then another book that I found in that vein um, is a book that came out this year, Everything Happens for a Reason by Kate Fowler. So this author is a professor of philosophy, I think. She specializes in the prosperity gospel, the idea that if you do good things, good things will happen to you. Um, I, I, you can tell I have feelings about that kind of philosophy. But anyway, uh, I find this, in, but this is an interesting book because she has studied that and taught that and done so many things with the that idea. And then she's diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And if you believe the prosperity gospel, you believe that something bad happens to you, then you have done something to deserve it almost. That, that's what that conversely means. Although I'm sure she would have answers for those questions in the book. But I, I find that very interesting that someone who believed that kind of thing is, is facing this. So I'm very interested to see her perspective. And I think it's important to read other perspectives, just the ones you disagree with. So I'm so interested to see what she has to say. And this came out this year and it was like $2. <laughs> No one was in the nonfiction section at the time, and so I got a lot of the first picks. I was very, very happy with that. Speaking of nonfiction, I found a delightful book, and that is a Appetite for Life, a biography of Julia Child by Noelle Riley Fitch. Now, I brought this home, and I was flipping through it, and I found someone loved Julia Child so much, they cut out a lot of her obituaries from newspapers and had them in the book. I don't know what he's barking at. I just want to talk about Julia Child, Dylan. Anyway, I I feel like a person who loves Julia Child that much, I, I need to take care of this book and take care of uh, and appreciate the love that this person had to cut out the obituaries and put them in her biography. So I am going to do that and I'm going to read it. You know I love Jonathan Stroud. So I finally found the last book in the Bartimaeus trilogy. This is Ptolemy's Gate. These are some of my favorite audiobooks, so I never actually bought them in print so I just listened to them on audio over and over but I have been finding them for a couple dollars at these library sales and so I found the last one now I just need the prequel 
and I think I might start collecting the Screaming Staircase series, which I'll talk to you guys about in my next wrap-up because I finally finished it. Well, this is about a different type of London where magicians rule parliament and uh, run the country, but they actually don't have any power. It's demons that they summon and control, and Bartimaeus is one of the viewpoint characters, and he is one of those demons, and he's very snarky, and I love him. Also, he uses footnotes, which is brilliant. I just, I just love him. <laughs> so if you haven't checked out this trilogy, you definitely should. It's fun and it teaches kids about footnotes and also it changes perspective because Bartimaeus is in first person and then Nathaniel, uh, the magician who controls him, is in third person. So I learned so much from this book and I didn't even realize when I read it when it first came out. Anyway, definitely go check these out. I just keep saying that, but I love Bartimaeus so much. He's one of my favorite characters. He's so snarky. Jonathan Stroud does such a great job with that. So a book that I picked up just because of the author, and, and that's Louise Erdrich's uh, A Plague of Doves. And I have no idea what this is about, but I don't need to know because it's Louise Erdrich and she's amazing. She wrote The Roundhouse, which I thought was amazing. Also won the National Book Award. So I'm not the only one that thinks that. But I want to read more of her books. And I really need to find a good one because I didn't like her most recent book. And I want to read all of her stuff. So I'm hoping that this is one that, that I will like. So there we go. So another book I found is actually a first edition of Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl. I've been thinking about this book a lot. And I was able to read the book without knowing anything about it. It's a miracle. I don't know how. Because this has one of the biggest plot twists known to recent like uh, thrillers and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't know I think it's great to be able to go into a book especially a popular book like this with to being totally clueless and not knowing it's popular or anything about it and just reading it and so that's what I did and I need I wish I could do that for Samuel but he already watched the movie and it's a total spoiler but uh, yeah this is one of this the phenomenal book with a great ending. I need to get Autumn to read it but I think she already knows the spoiler that's just a problem. It's like reading Never Let Me Go and knowing the spoiler, which I did, and it was a sad situation. So the last book I have to show you is this just tome of a book, and that is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. This came out a f several years ago and was all the buzz, and I actually have a paperback edition of this somewhere. I actually don't know where it is now, but I found this hardback edition for just $2, and I was like, yep, just picking that up and putting that in my tote bag. <laughs> Uh, this is a Pride and Prejudice plus magic and stuff. Uh, I've never actually finished this book, but I'm going to. It's on my list of books that I definitely want to finish. And I read a few hundred pages of it, but I think I was in grad school or something. I didn't have time. Anyway, I do want to finish this. And also, I just love this. Just look at that. It's huge. This is like the biggest fantasy book ever. And I wonder what she's working on now. So I don't know. But yeah. There is that one. So I said I wasn't going to show you any books that I bought for someone else, but I don't think Jack watches my channel. <laughs> so uh, my nephew uh, loves Star Wars and he loves mechanics. He is a numbers boy, like his dad, uh, and he loves mechanics and building things and he loves Star Wars. Jack is basically me if I loved numbers and was a boy, right? So he loves Star Wars and he loves mechanics and this is a breakdown of the different vehicles in Star Wars Episode One. Oh my goodness, this looks amazing and it was a dollar. And so I was like, of course, of course he's going to get this because it's amazing. And I was so happy and Samuel was like, did you really buy that for Jack or, or was that for you? And I was like, well, I mean, I can't give it to him until I see him at Christmas. So it's like, well, I'll just, I'll just wait. He can hang out with me for a while. <laughs> Anyway, that's all that I got at the library sale this year. Uh, tell me about your library sales. Do they have library sales? What kind are they? Do you get great hauls out of them? I, I love ours. I think they do a really great job and it's a great way to support your local library. And so if you love an industry or if you love books like we do here on BookTube, I think that's definitely a great way to support an industry you love. So there you go. I guess that's it for me for now. I will be back later to tell you about some of the books that I read in October. Until then, I'll talk to you later. Bye.